In this podcast series, we'll be playing the terrific role-playing game Call of Cthulhu, made by Chaosium and inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. I'll be playing with friends, readers, and fantastic role players through a story I have written. However, as this is horror heavy, this content may only be suitable for more mature audiences, but don't let that stop you from liking the video and subscribing to the channel so you don't miss out on any other creative storytelling or writing based content. And without much further ado, let's get started. Obviously we'll start kind of like I did last time, just a quick overview of what you're doing in your current day, and then we'll start introducing the strange and horrible things known as Call of Cthulhu. Okie dokie. Um, so first of all, I'll just read this out. Uh, the cold chill of winter has arrived early in Arkham. The wind pierces the streets and rain falls daily. The streets, alleys and establishments have become a little run down in recent years, reflected by the sentiments of its denizens. However, it is not a time without excitement. Professors of archaeology have recently returned from their summer expeditions, police have been cracking down on the criminal elements, and people are excited about the release of the latest black and white films. So, we'll start with you, Arthur. Uh, what Did time is it? What time is it? It's early in the morning, 8 a.m. Okay, I'm just getting ready to go to the library to work. Okay. Like uh, eat, eating my meager breakfast and going to work. Like spend my day in the library. Okay. Um, while you're going to work, um, your mind keeps going back to dreams that you had last night. Um, dreams of your mother and father. You get flashes of a car. You get flashes of them saying goodbye to you for the last time. And then nothing. There's just this weird sensation of a question, but not knowing what the question is. As you get to the library, again, your colleagues greet you. Um, you see the woman that you've been interested in, um, and she's been there every now and then. She's left the library just as you go there, um, which seems odd because the library has just opened and she's leaving it. It strikes your mind for a moment and then you get about your work. I would say roughly midday, during your lunch, and um, Professor Fadius Thatch comes looking for you. Uh, where would you be at this time at midday? Uh, around the library, like in the campus, but okay. close to the library. Okay. And would you say that the professor knows you well enough to know where you would be? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, okay. a common place for us to meet. Okie dokie. So, Fadi's Flatch, he comes and meets you. There's a bit of a look of worry on his face. Oh, hello, Thomas. Hi, Professor. Um... I, I, I need to talk to you uh, about an issue. Um, can we... Would, is there anywhere private? Is there anywhere in the library we could go? Or we could go to my office, if that would be more... Suitable? Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, is everything all right? Um, <laughs> yes, um, but I have something to ask of you. I have a, a bit of a favor. I don't want to ask more of you than I, I've already helped you, and I know that you've already helped me more no, than no, a no, thousand no. times just, over. If you need, if you need me, just ask. Let's go to your office, and we can talk there. Okay. Um, you follow him to his office, and um, he seems a bit nervous, he's looking around over his shoulders, um, I don't know, you just, you've never seen him in this way before, um, and yeah, he just seems to be looking at everyone that's passing as if he's looking for a face. Okay, I start to look around too, I okay. don't know how this works. Okay. <laughs> um, you get to his office, um, he, he, he 
brings you in and then he closed the door behind you, he sits at his desk. Um, he, he unlocks his drawer and pulls out a, a canteen of whiskey. <laughs> um, would you would you like some, Thomas? Yeah, sure. Okay. Like, I just take it, but I don't drink it. Okay. Just, <laughs> just to make more social. Okay. Um, yeah, he, he, he pours out a glass for you and him. And then he just... I'll just turn that down, sorry. He's looking at a telegram on his desk. Sweat speeding down his forehead. Again, he just looks nervous. But he, he looks less tense now that he's in his office. The door's closed. And he's got whiskey in him now. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask again, Professor, is everything alright? Have um, something happened? Um, I don't know exactly what to say at this stage, but... Um, d did you know, um, Dr. Ashton Wells at all? Did I know him? Um, can you give me a... Intelligence idea. Uh, intelligence roll, sorry. Okay, just straight. Um, yeah, you did know him. He was professor at the university as well, and he was a professor. A press, if I can speak English, he is a professor of literary studies. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I know him. What are um for the last? I think it's been the last two or three weeks. Um, he was he was working with a small group of students, and then he just disappeared. Um, I've been working with a well, private investigator because some valuable things from the university have gone missing. I'm not entirely sure what, um, but we have a archaeology archaeology expedition coming in soon. Um, very exciting stuff, I assure you. And he smiles as if, as if the situation's completely changed and he's not worrying. And then his face goes back almost pale. Um, but yes, Dr. Ashton Wells and some very valuable objects have gone missing from the university. Um, so I've been working with a private investigator trying to find where, whereabouts he's gone. Um, and then he just... He hands over to you the telegram. Okay, I take it and read it. Okay, this should work. Hunch, you might see this too, but obviously I don't know how to show it to a specific person. So, uh, da, 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 da. okay. Do you see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay. Um, he just he just waits for a second. Just he looks down into his glass and he just takes a few sips while you read that. Do you want to read it out? I, I out loud, or um, it's up to you because it's only you at this point. It's entirely up to you. I don't know if your hunch can see it or not. Uh, I can, but I can't stop. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, to Professor Ta uh, Tadeo Stach, Department of Biology and Physics, Mystonic University, Arkham. Dr. Tadeusz, I have been... Okay, I can read some of this. Oh. Sorry, okay, I will just read to me. No, I'm going to okay. read for me because I can do this, the both at the same time. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Do you want me to read it out loud for a hunch? Yeah, if you want it. Okay. Um, Sorry. Fine. You fine? Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, he just looks over his glass, takes a few sips, um, and he just asks you, I am quite busy right now, but this is quite urgent. Um, I'm, I'm sure you see the address below. Oh shit, I, okay, I found it. Yeah, I see it. Would you be able to go and meet with this man and would you be able to give him s some aid? Is somebody you can trust? I've been working him for yeah, the past two weeks now. Well, if you think I will be able to help him? 
Does, um, he's a private detective, no? Apparently he needs... He, he told me that he needed scholarly aid, apparently some translations of some texts of some kind. Um, apparently it may help him find the whereabouts well, of sure. Dr. Ashton Wells. And I could think no one as better as you, and I've already spoken with the the library, you can have an extended leave, and you'll get paid, don't worry, but it's mainly a favor for the university, and, well, for me, really. Well, if you think I'll be able to help, I'm glad to help, Professor. Thank you, uh, Thomas. Um, he just takes a large gulp and then starts rubbing his head. Okay, we'll go over to Hunch. Okay. What does your average day look like? Uh, weekdays go down to the theatre mm -hmm. uh, with dress rehearsals on the weekends, um, lounging, socialising, mm -hmm. uh, attempting to grease palms with the industry. Okay. I would say that it's a weekday, so it's a Tuesday early morning. Um, so you're at the theatre? Uh, yes, I'd be just entering the theatre for dress rehearsal. Okay, cool. Um, when you walk in, you see Chris Jules. Um, he's smoking a large cigar. Um, and he appears, he appears fine, quite jovial for this time in the morning, but you've known him for a while, he's got quite a stern face, so even if he is happy, he never really shows it. You're looking quite pep today, Chris. Oh, uh, well, we've got some uh, fresh blood coming in, so to speak, anyway. We're just, I'm just trying to figure out at the moment who's going to train these up. At the moment, they're a bit soppy and they're overacting quite a lot, but... We'll get them to your stage, we'll get them to your level of acting soon, don't worry. They'd best not be just new blood front actors. We need... They need to work the back this time. Background actors, non important characters. We can't have a repeat of <laughs> King Lear again. Oh, oh god. Remind me what happened again. One of them flubbed their lines, vomited, and passed out. Oh, true. That didn't really help our reviews, did it? No. No, it didn't. He looks... There seems to be a bit of a glint in his eye when he's looking at you, as if he's looking at money. Is there... something I could help you with, Chris? Now that you mention it... Uh, how would you like to work in the movies? I have been waiting for that question to be asked for over a decade now. Well, I got a bit of a friend. Well, I say friend, but he's got a contact. Do you know Lon Chaney? Lon Chaney. Do I know Lon Chaney? Give me an intelligence roll. That's a hard success. I am very familiar with that work. Um, yeah, he's at this time he's quite a famous director. Black and white movies, such as Th Phantom of the Opera, which is out soon. Am I familiar with his work? Sir, I will have you know that I have some of his work on phonograph. Wow. Those are quite expensive, Francis. Indeed. They're worth every penny. <laughs> um, he just you he slaps your shoulder me? and he laughs. So, yeah? Go ahead. He said, The only catch is this friend... He needs a bit of a favor first before, you know, he's going to talk to his friend Lon Chaney and put you on the steps to stardom. He hands you a telegram. Can you see that? I can, yes. Do you want to read it or read it out loud? It's entirely up to you. Uh, let's see. Francis Darling, street number, Arkham Theatre House. Federal Street, Arkham. I have seen your mass masterful performances, and they believe that you are destined for bigger and better things. 
I have a contact that goes by the name of Moncini. A name I am sure you have heard of. But I have a problem. If you help me out with it, I will help you become a star. Meet me at 3pm today at the below address. Joseph Williams, apartment 3F, Russell Hotel, French Hill Street. Again, Chris Jules is just smoking his cigar as if he's just playing with something. He just... He sees monies in his eyes. He sees his small Arkham Theatre house becoming incredibly famous. This is all painted all over his face. And so, Chris, I believe yeah. I have been in this industry long enough. Mm -hmm. You certainly have, Francis. What do you get out of this? What do you get out of this? I see that glint in your eye. Well, you know, promotion, you came from here. Well, you haven't came from here, but... You certainly have made a name for yourself here. I've made a name for myself on Broadway as well. Well, you know, if you scratch our back from time to time, take a few actors with you, you know, we can make quite a lot of business this way. And obviously, we'll be keeping you the main star, though. Of course. Of course, of course we'd never tread on your shoes. I'll see if anything comes up for you, Chris. My pat him on the back. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna go and help this fella? I don't know what he wants, but could be anything. I suppose it's worth a look. Okay. But, uh... Let me know how, how it goes, Francis. You won't need me today, would you? Um, you could help out in the morning a little bit, and then you could. You can go over whenever you feel necessary. Okay. Well, if I remember, we needed help on Act 3, so I'll get that done in the morning. Uh, Act 5, I'm not in much. Uh, you can... Yeah, you we'll know, reschedule that. that. Yeah, cool. Um, he just... He ends up shouting at somebody who's moving a crate behind um, the stage curtains, and then he, yeah, he just goes straight into business mode, like you know him. But still smoking that cigar. Okay. Okay, we'll go back to Arthur. I would say, <clears throat> fast forward, it's around about 2.30 p.m. What are you doing at 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon? Okay, I was at lunch mm -hmm. talking with Professor. Yep. So I just grabbed my things, uh, went to my house, uh -huh. and now I'm looking for the address. Okay. I would say you both know Arkham well enough. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. I would say everybody knows Arkham well enough at this stage. You know how to find the street. So from the university to French Hill Street, I'd say it takes you about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, no longer than that. Oh. Okay, what? And um, Hunt, do you know where the Arkham Theatre House is? I can't remember if I told you or not. I... So. It's for Peabody Avenue, so it's near the square at the top. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, what are you doing at around about 2.30 after talking to the professor, grabbing your things? I'm looking for the, the address. Like, okay. I can't find my house here, and I'm not... Can you ping in the map where um, the address is, please? Yes, give me a second if I just find the right... Where's the ping gone? Uh, you just hold it, this click. You just hold Oh, it. okay. French Hills, it's roughly here. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know much. It's like the professor with... I talk with the professor mm -hmm. a little more. I. I couldn't discover what was wrong with him, so mm. I'm very, very apprehensive. So I just got my, uh, grabbed my things and and went to find the the uh, uh, Joseph Williams to see what's going on. Like, okay. The faster I can solve this, the better. Okay. I would say um, you get to French Street around about 20 minutes after, so I would say it's about 10 to 3 in the afternoon. Okay. You find the address. It's just a very small, um, 
it's not a very big looking apartment building, it just looks very basic. Um, it looks like a bit of a rundown area as well, nothing too special. Um, and just before we continue with that, Hunch, what are you doing around about that time? Uh, what time was it again? About 2.30. Uh, I would be attempting to hail a taxi to the French house. Okay, cool. Um, you hail a taxi, so you would get there... How did you get there, Arthur? Did you cycle? Bicycle. Bicycle, okay. Yeah. I would say because of taxi two thirty. I would say probably Hunch gets there first. So Arthur, I mean Thomas, sorry. Um, okay. As you get there, um, you see a car, and um, pulling up, you see a quite a large man, um, tall, large, but he's he's quite handsome. Um, speaking to a taxi driver, um, he's he's laughing. You know, there seems to be a bit of banter back and forth. And then he, he pays the cab off, the cab drives away, and then he walks into the building. Do you walk into the building, Hunch? Uh, I... Can I have a look at the building first? Yeah, yeah. So he just stands there, he looks up and around the building. Um, like I said, very basic, looks quite run down. Um, most of the windows have curtains drawn, it's quite difficult to see in. It looks like, it just looks like a bit of a... A bit of a dump, really. It looks quite like a poor quality hotel or apartment of some kind. Uh, I think I would knock. Okay. Just walk in. Okay, so um, Thomas, just Wait. as you get there, you sorry, sorry, what were you saying, Hunch? It's an apartment building, isn't it? Yeah, apartment building. Yeah. Yeah, I'd walk inside and try and find my apartment first. Okay. Knock at the front door. Okay, and um, so. It looks like an apartment building from the outside, so um, Thomas, just as you get there, the, a larger man, he knocks on the door, then he just walks in. Um, Hunch, uh, Francis, sorry. Um, you get in, there's like quite a, f a lot of newspapers on a small wooden desk, um, there's some like a small seating area, um, loads of ash, it doesn't look like it's being cle cleared regularly at all. Um, there's a man sitting at a reception. Joseph Williams, I presume? Um, no. Who are you? <laughs> Who am I? I am Francis Darling. Nice to meet you. Uh, you looking for a room? I was looking for a Joseph Williams. Mm, well, we have many floors here. He could be staying here, I suppose. He's just looking at you while he's chewing on something. And uh, pray tell, where would the stairs be for the third floor? Well, just look, just look past the desk, buddy. Um, <laughs> the stairs are like right, just this is a closed door, but they're right there, at the end. Again, uh, it's a nod of acknowledgement, I. Head on up to the third floor. Um, as you walk past, he just stares at you, <laughs> as if this larger-than-life character has just walked in and he doesn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> um, so you do that, Thomas. What are you doing? Okay, I just saw Francis in uh, into the building, but to me, it doesn't mean nothing. I yeah. think because it's a building, so. I park my bike and mm -hmm. I enter. Okay. And I go. To, I see the receptionist. Mm -hmm. And I just go fast talk like, sorry, so good afternoon, sir. I have a deliver pack for uh, Mrs. Joseph Williams. Is he around? Uh, yeah, give me a fast talk roll. Okay. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Um, the doors are to the right there, buddy. You can go upstairs, deliver it yourself. Don't need to sign anything. It's not that kind of place. Oh. Okay. Thank you, sir. And I, I go past him. Hey, you're welcome. He looks a little bit confused, a bit flustered, as in, 
these two things have just happened back to back and he doesn't know how to deal with the situation uh, Francis we're back to you okay uh, heading to the third floor okay now character wise who do you think would get there first um I don't know. I'm very, very large, mm -hmm. but I spend most of my day on a stage, so I'm not that slow on my feet. Okay. So say you're walking upstairs, um, Thomas, you aware of, obviously, Francis entering the building, you don't know who it is at this point, um, but you can you can hear somebody just ahead of you climbing the stairs as well, doesn't really mean anything at this stage. Um, Francis, you get to the third floor. Um, on this floor, um, there appears to be uh, four rooms um, on a zigzag pattern. So the first room is on the left, then second room is on the right, third room is on the left, fourth room is on the right. Again, it looks quite similar to downstairs. It doesn't look like it's being cleared regularly. Um, there's rubbish on the floor. Again, looks like a bit of a dump. doesn't look like a very nice place to stay. Names on the doors? Uh, there is indeed. There is a. The first door on the left is a 3B. On the right, there is a 3C, 3D, and then at the end, for some strange reason, there's a missing 3E. There's a 3F <coughs> on the end. Okay. I'll go to the 3F. Okay. There's a knock on the door. Okay. Uh, yeah, you knock on the door. Um, there's currently no answer. Um, Thomas, you just get to the top of the stairs and you see Francis at the end of the hallway. Again, you say the same thing. You say four different rooms on either side. Okay, just I know that the room Francis is is knocking on the door. Is the room I need to go? Um, you have a quick glance at the um the room numbers on the doors and yeah you can you can assume that that's where you need to go at the end okay so i go to the door next to him and mm -hmm. knock <laughs> okay wait you're knocking on 3f as well no i knocking on 3e or 3c <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're knocking on another door uh yep. you get no answer on that door either okay i just just knock to like I want to hear what Francis is going to say if someone opens the 3F. I'm just killing time okay. to see what happens. Okay. Uh, so Francis, um, what do you do? You didn't get, there was no answer to the door. Well, currently this uh, strange meek man has just kind of slyly come up near me and started knocking on the door next to me. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like he's watching me. Okay. I'm going to knock again and uh, call out for Joseph Williams. Okay, yeah, you knock on his door, you call out for Joseph Williams. Um, can you give me a listen roll? No, I can attempt to. <laughs> wow. Yes, yes I can. Remember to tick skills that you succeeded in? Um, there's no answer to the door, but you can hear somebody moving around inside. Can I check the door to see if it's open? Uh, you can. You check the door, and it is currently locked. And can you give me okay, a secondary seems... listen roll? Sorry, yeah, Thomas? Yeah, the, I just hear him like calling for Joseph, right? Yeah, yeah you did. So I going to approach him and he's like, Sir, you're looking for Joseph? Joseph Williams? Uh, are you? Uh, Joseph? No, 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 I'm just looking for him. Someone sent me here to talk to him, but I didn't know where he lives. He wouldn't happen to have been sent by Telegram, would you? Who? Telegram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, my professor received one and I just volunteer to help him. And I show him the telegram. Okay. So, Francis, you see uh, Thomas's telegram. And 
And I can assume that because of your apparent lack of knowledge of where he lives, you've never met him before either. No, it's my first time here. Blended. Uh, DM, mm -hmm. compared to my building, mm -hmm. how this building looks? Um, it looks like quite a similar layout, but this looks a lot less clean. Like nobody's really working here. Like nobody would choose to come here unless they're trying to get away or they're very down on their look or they've got no money, basically. It looks like a very cheap place to stay. Oh, okay. Okay. Just to know. I okay. would, say, would say some. Okay. Go on. Well, either this is a very strange opportunity I found myself into, a huge waste of time, or an elaborate prank. And I am not a novice. <laughs> okay, can you both give me a listen, Will? Okay. Mm. And Thomas? Okay. Ooh. Um, Thomas, just as um, Francis Darling saying he's not he's not very amused, he gets a look of frustration on his face. It goes quiet, and you hear something in the room that sounds like blo broken glass or glass breaking. Okay, I look to him. Do you hear that? I think someone broke a glass. And I knock on the door again and call for Joseph. Mr. Okay. Joseph, are you there? Okay. Again, there's still no answer. Okay, I'm gonna try to open the door. Okay. How are you gonna try gonna and open the door? I'm gonna lock pick the door. Okay. I'm gonna take out my switchblade and just look at Francis and Okay. Just give me some space. Okay. And I go and try to block me. Ooh. And that's it. Okay. Um, you make quite a lot of noise <laughs> as you're doing this. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't budge. You spend a good 30, 40, then 50 seconds. What are you doing, Francis, as you see him doing this? I'm just kind of watching in sheer broad moment. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> just uh, took out a switch knife and just like jamming it in the lock. <laughs> <laughs> when I fail, I just will like look at him like, sorry, can I go back to my place? <laughs> okay. So yeah. However, the noise of the glass has stopped and it seems very quiet on this floor. I'm going to go find out who's living in 3F from the receptionist. Okay. So yeah, you, you go back down to reception. What are you doing, Thomas? I'm just going to stay here and try to listen again. Okay. See if there any movement or okay. anything. I'll do that first then. So um, Thomas, give me a listen roll as Francis descends the stairs. Okay. Just one minute. Because... Oh, shit. Oh, here. Okay, so in this situation, this would be a perfect situation to spend luck, for example. Just to give you an example. Okay. I just, like, I have so little that I, mm -hmm. I don't think I want to waste this. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> it's a good idea. Okay, yeah, um, you hear nothing. In fact, yeah, you hear, you hear nothing at all. Um, Francis, you get downstairs. Receptionist looks over to you again and he just, like, rubs his head. Uh. Excuse me, could you tell me uh, who was living in 3F? I was under the impression that my friend Joseph Williams was living in 3F. And I was wondering uh, if there was a mistake. Uh, do you have any records on 3F? Yeah, I, I do. I have some records. Yeah, okay. Give me a fast talk. 
Okay. Um, he just looks you up and down as if he's trying to get a sense of who you are. Yeah, I have records. He pulls them out, keeps them closed, and he just looks at you as if expecting something. Well, rather unorthodox, but... Well, you know, man's got to make a living. Man does have to make a living. And I slide a ten onto the table. A ten? A ten. Ten dollars. Okay. Oh, okay, sir, yeah. Um, he just opens up the book. Um, who, what do you want to know? I can give you all the names. What, what do you want to know? Oh, I would like to know whether my Joseph Williams... Okay. Was... Um, he just, like, quickly looks in the book, and he looks very surprised. Um, Joseph Williams, da, 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 da. yeah, free F. Uh, yeah, Joseph Williams is currently staying there. He's been staying here for the past two weeks. Um, he he did leave earlier this morning, but then he came back around about one one fifteen. He's been up there since, I think. Was it strange? Cause uh, you wouldn't answer the door for me, and uh, could have sworn had broken glass. Now, I don't want to be too much of a trouble, but if he's fallen and hurt himself, then that could get messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference. As if, uh, if there's a bit of a mess up there, it ain't my problem, but... Since how you... him now would be the difference between uh, moving a person to hospital and moving a body and cleaning it. Okay, 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 okay. Um, Tell you what I'll do, I'll give you the keys. If you have any problems, just let me know. Is that okay? That is... Perfect, my man. Thank you very much. Um, he just looks at a train of keys. Um, he looks at them for a second, jangling them, and he pulls a key off, and he just hands it to you. And he just said, don't mention it. I mean, don't mention it to anybody. Of course, my friend. Okay, then he, he goes back to the book. You, you need anything? Just, just let me know. I will, my friend. I will. Okay. I will ascend the stairs again. Okay. Uh, Thomas, what are you doing while that happens? Mm, okay. I don't. I, okay, I'm. Can I try to look uh, below the door to see if there is anything that I can see? Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. So you can get on the floor. You look on the floor. You look underneath. Um. Not really a look roll for this, but I'm gonna say give me a spot hidden to see if you see anything underneath the crack. A what? A spot hidden roll. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, you see a couple of feet moving about the room, and then it, it goes to the side, and then you no longer see it. Okay. But it was just uh, one pair of feet. Um, Francis gets to the top of the stairs, and he sees you just getting up from the floor. Okay, so when I see Francis, are you gonna just whisper to him, There's someone here! There's someone in the room! Yes, I imagine that is Joseph Williams, the man we are there to see. And if he's here, why didn't he answer the door? Well, perhaps this uh, Joseph Williams is hard of hearing. Okay, it's possible. While Francis, I see the key in the in Francis' hand. Mm-hmm. So I think he's going to open the door, so I go behind him. I'm going to stay behind him all the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what do you do, Francis? I'm just perplexed by this very strange man. I see him getting up off the floor, attempting to jam a knife into a lock. He's a very strange person. Uh, but I'm going to walk over to 3F and try the key. Okay. Yeah? You put the key in, and it unlocks. And I'm going to open the door. Okay. Just as you open the door, you step onto broken glass. Um, 
and you just quickly glance about the room. There's a chair knocked over. There's papers um, flowing. The window open. There's a window open to um, the side street alley where there is currently like a fire exit. And on the bed, you can see a man um, with blood dripping from his mouth and smeared down his jacket. 